Hello? Am I audible? It's not. Hello? Hello, am I audible? Lina Kumar, Kekamanda? Hello. Hello. Ah, what do you build? Hello, Lino Kumar. Yeah. Yes. Good evening. Yes. Good evening. Good evening. Yes, yes, yes. Good evening. Okay. Just checking. Okay. Hello, Shankar. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, nice to see you back. Yes. <laughs> Oh, nice. Yeah, hi. Yeah. Hey, Shankar. Yeah. Yeah. Linu Kumar is a professor in, in Gurudev College, which is about one and a half hours from here. Okay. And Shankar is a professor in NIT Trichy. Okay. I'm 
it's already three but we'll give it a couple of more minutes in case someone is joining Linu Kumar you said uh, you, a friend of yours was going to join is he on your end or is he going to log in separately uh, seminar start uh, seminar start okay. uh, Okay. Ah. Okay. 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 Okay, so I think I should start the talk if, if, if it's fine with Shankar and Linu Kumar. Okay, I see the, I, I focus in this direction because I, I view you guys there. So probably you'll see me facing that direction. That's because that's where the viewers are from my perspective. If I look here, then I don't see you guys. So that's just a, a sort of a disclaimer if I should put in. So today I wanted to talk about a direction of a friction on, on rolling wheels. So let's say uh, the direction of friction on rolling uh, wheels. This is addressed uh, to a high school uh, student, uh, even though uh, the, among the audience, I have two professors, so it's very ironical that last time, last Saturday, I prepared a talk for college students, and I had to address it to a sixth standard student. And today, I address. I decided to plan it for a high school student, and there are two uh, professors uh, up there. So, uh, hopefully, uh, it will be. Uh, it it will not be useless. So, uh, but feel free to interrupt me if there are any questions. No, uh, no problems at all. So it's a very it's just three of us here. So please feel free to ask uh, questions. So let me begin uh, by uh, the first thing I would say is uh, Newton's laws, right? So it's all based on Newton's laws. So this is. Uh, Newton's uh, laws of motion. Let's say it's not even a wheel as of now. If I just simply have a mass M and I try to slide it. So this is a mass M. And if I were to try to move it, what I would do is I will exert a, a force on it. And for that purpose, let me say, or let, I should ask what are the forces acting on this mass? One force is acting downward. That's the force of gravity. So the first 
uh, point is to identify all the forces. So that's one is acting downward. That is a normal force, which is basically saying that it doesn't want to let this mass fall down. Right? If there was no, if there was no surface. Yeah. Fast. Uh, maybe I can mute. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. So yeah, so that is a there are two forces uh, we have recognized or identified. One is acting downward, the other is acting upward. And now if we want to move it, we would like to uh, exert an external force. And this is the external force, F external. And the question is what happens in that case if, uh, if there is no other forces, especially if this is a frictionless surface, whenever I say frictionless, a uh, good thing to imagine is that you're on ice, like uh, think of a very perfect ice, very smooth ice, and it, uh, it is very difficult to even stand on it. And the moment you exert a, even a tiniest amount of external force, it will move uh, forward. So you would say, uh, these are vectors in principle, so we want to have the direction associated with it. So, so the direction allows us to separate our x direction, that is the horizontal direction, and the vertical direction. Right. So we will try to separate them out, and all the time in this discussion, we will have the forces either horizontal or vertical. So we won't have to worry about projecting those uh, forces. So Newton's law tells that mass times acceleration. So this is the mass times acceleration in the horizontal direction is equal to the force that's acting on it. So the way to interpret this is that this acceleration is helped by the force. The force assists acceleration but the mass resists acceleration. That's called the inertia to uh, motion. And in the y direction, it is not accelerating in the sense that it, in the y direction, if you say it is not moving up or down as it going horizontally. So that means you say that there is no motion and motion is associated with acceleration. So you would say this is zero is equal to up is plus n and down is minus mg. So since it's down, one of them has to be opposite to the other. So that's the, if you want, again, this tells that this helps motion. A is the motion, like uh, it is intuitively the way to see it is that acceleration is motion, right? But now we want to put in friction. And in this case, so friction, we should decide, how do we decide what is the direction of friction? That's our goal in this case it is straightforward the idea would be that friction always is a response to motion so if you try to make something move it will try to resist it so the, when you're moving this or when you try if it is at rest the moment you exert a force you're trying to change its velocity from zero to some finite velocity and the friction is going to resist that so in this case the friction will be backward and we will denote the friction by F with a subscript F and external force is what is what you're exerting. So you're trying to push this that side friction is in the backward direction. And this will show up here. That's minus F. So all this should be intuitive, even though I write algebraic equations, motion is helped by external force. Motion is resisted by the friction. And in the vertical direction, since there is no motion, all the forces has to balance. So N has to be equal to Mg, right? If I put this on the other side, this simply says that the upward force is exactly equal to the gravity. N is also called the normal force. So that's your Newton's law. That's the way we want to discuss this. And we want to proceed 
and see how this uh, uh, goes when I introduce rolling. But before I proceed, let me quickly talk about friction itself, a little bit about it, even though it is sufficient for us to just know that friction is a response to whatever someone is trying to do. If you're trying to move it linearly, or as we will see very soon, if you're trying to rotate it, it has to resist that. But uh, for completeness, let me say, uh, let me talk about uh, uh, the models for friction. So let's say, uh, let me go to the next board. So this is called a Montons or Coulomb law or model actually, it's not really a law, it's just a model of friction. Okay, let me, yeah. Okay, hopefully I just muted uh, so that there is no, uh, but feel free to unmute yourself and ask me questions. I'll encourage that even though I sometimes mute in case there is a background uh, noise. Yeah. Okay. So with that, so uh, uh, friction really is, uh, it's very hard to understand how uh, friction works. So the first thing is, uh, uh, or the, even today we use a model for friction that is pretty old. It is almost in 600 or even before that when a mountain wrote that law, but then it is called Coulomb's law for various reasons. I think it was popularized during the time of Coulomb. And of course, Coulomb also did work on it but it was uh, there all the time in 1600, uh, uh, in the early uh, days. So uh, we can ask, what does friction depend on? Again, we have the mass M for, now let's not keep rolling yet. And we have an external force acting here and we have friction force acting downward, Mg and normal force. And these are all vectors. And we would like to know how, what, what does uh, the force of friction uh, depend on? Coulomb and Amonton realized that this is independent of area. That's very non trivial, right? Independent of area. And this was, in fact, not even a monton. It went all, it goes all the way to uh, uh, Leonardo. Da Vinci in his writings, it is already clearly pictureized that how this does not depend on area. Intuitively, you would think that if you increase the surface area here, it should increase. But here is a logical argument Leonardo da Vinci used. Uh, think of a mass in this shape. It is slightly elongated on this end. So let's say this is, this is the shape of an object. And so that's a surface. Now clearly the bottom surface here has a larger area than the cross section. You can tilt this, so tilt this now and say that this is like this. And all the way back, uh, Leonardo da Vinci did experiments on this and they tried to exert a force, reasonably easy experiment to do, but at the same time, hard in the sense that these things are very sensitive. So, but to a 25%, uh, 40% accuracy, it is easy to do these experiments. And it, they could show that even though this area is significantly smaller than this area, this is just, you have tilted it. This does not depend on area at all. So it is independent of area. Then you ask, so what does it depend on? And the counterintuitive uh, uh, point is that it doesn't depend on area, but depends on the normal force. So it depends on the normal force, proportional 
to n. And how do you see that uh, uh, this took all the way until about 18, uh, late, uh, late 1900s to realize how exactly do you picturize this? And one of the way it was done was uh, using Hertz, Hertz's, uh, I think it's uh, elastic theory, elasticity if you want. Uh, so the way to see it is that suppose uh, you zoom this on a surface and there are corrugations. For simplicity, let me say these corrugations are exactly sinusoidal. That's not the way surfaces are, they're very random. But if we say this is sinusoidal, even then you can pictureize that they need not come and fit in exactly at the same place. It could be like this. This could be a small, very tiny segment of contact here might have this. So this is a contact region being zoomed out and it doesn't have to be sinusoidal, but that's a possibility. And now if you say, what is the area of contact? So now you say that even though you went ahead and said that it is independent of area, but this is the area of contact, right? So that's this tiny segment here. That's the only, that's really tiny. And now, you increase the force on this, so increase the weight, right? You push on this, you're increasing the weight. And what happens to this area of contact and Hertz's model is that this gets pressed, squeezed and the area of contact. So, so this is area of contact is proportional to the normal force. So you increase the weight, you increase the area of contact and thus N decides instead of the area deciding the force of friction, it is a normal force that decides the, uh, decides the uh, force of friction. Eventually, it also depends on molecular force, uh, molecular interactions at, at this tiny, uh, tiny zoomed in places and that is, it could be Coulomb interaction, or by Coulomb interaction, I mean by charges, or it is more interesting to see what if these are not really ha uh, having, these are built out of polarizable materials or the interactions are purely van der Waals, and then what happens? So those are interesting uh, points, but all this is contained in what we will call mu, sometimes mu s and mu n. And all this can be summarized as the force of friction is, if it is static, it is mu s times n. And if it is moving, it is mu k times n. It's, it's less than or equal to or equal to. So that's just an equation that tells us, uh, tells whatever I said here, the force of friction is proportional to the normal force. And it depends on material properties, which is what is meant by molecular, what kind of interactions does it have? That's mu s. But for our purposes, it, it is proportional to mu s times n. And we will mostly talk about static friction and not really worry about uh, uh, motion. And even though things will be moving, we will see that it is the static friction that comes into picture. So that's uh, a background of, of friction. This is the equation that governs it. But for us, it is uh, these ideas that will be uh, important. Any questions at this stage? Uh, any comments or question, please feel free to interrupt. Yeah. Uh, Shajesh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, yeah. Uh, what is the idea of that normal force in this whole scenario? Uh, what is the idea of the normal force? Is that what you said? Yeah. yeah. Uh, can you repeat the question again? It will help. Yeah, I just want to understand a little bit more about normal force. Where is it coming from? Oh, where is it coming from? Yeah, good point. Yeah. So, yeah. So, where is the, so what we are saying is, where is the normal force coming from? Let's think of, th this is a floor here, either a floor or the surface of a table, any surface. 
if not for the surface let's imagine there is no surface let's remove all these forces just 1 mg so if this is an air and if i were to let this go this fall goes, goes down and that's because there is mg acting downward and by mg i mean this is the force of gravity on this mass m so that is making it fall down the surface the uh, what it tries to do is this tries to go down but it depends on the surface does it want to let it go down or not if it is a very soft surface it might go through it but if it's a hard rigid surface then it cannot go so it is stopped and the normal force is the molecular forces that exert a force in the upward direction maybe the comment is that these are exactly the same molecular forces that's down here in general the forces will be somewhere in this direction if the tendency is for this uh, response to be in that manner some of it is here which is called the normal force and this will be the lateral force the lateral force so this has a component here that's lateral and that will be a normal force a normal because these molecular interactions need not be perpendicular to the surface but it is the normal force that is being cancelled by mg so yeah the origin of the nor normal forces is completely in at the at a molecular level uh, in my understanding does that roughly answer your question i don't think i gave a concrete answer yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, you would like to comment on it, uh, comment further on it, maybe? I think it's fine. Uh, yeah, yeah, as you said, uh, intuitively, it should be something to do with the molecular response to the, the external force. Yeah. Correct. Correct. And it is, a, yeah, it's a good to point out that it's a response. The friction, whatever we say, is a response. Someone has to exert a force to the right, or the gravity has to try to pull it down for this normal force and the force of friction to exist. And both originate from the same molecular force, but one is in the normal direction and one is in the lateral uh, direction. That's the idea. And again, for our purposes for today's discussion, it's a response force and it is going to resist whatever we are going to try to if we try to make it make the system move it will try to resist that uh, motion <clears throat> okay so uh, can i interrupt for yeah. a minute yes please so in, in this kind of uh, you know simple picture you are essentially saying that the lateral forces are cancelled is it the, which are in the opposite direction yes and that's primarily because if there was like the idea is that if we don't exert any force to begin with an equilibrium all this cancel right that is what in a flat surface ideally flat surface there is no tendency to move right or to the left that means all the lateral forces do cancel out one can hypothetically think of a situation where you have a let's say a simple uh a very oscillatory, uh, perfectly oscillatory scenario here and another perfectly oscillatory scenario with a different wavelength. And think of graphene sheets. These days we do experiments with uh, graphene sheets. And you can think of two such sheets with having sinusoidal corrugations and, but not touching each other, but they are having molecular interactions between. And we can talk about, is there a force of friction in that? We did do this analysis, a student worked with me and uh, a high school student worked with me and did do this analysis. And we did find that uh, we could try to at least uh, estimate the coefficient of friction out of this, but that's probably not related to what we have. So probably that helps uh, that. So it, it will cancel out on an average, it will cancel out in that direction. It, uh, helps. That's fine. Yeah, please. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for the questions. Great. Yeah. Okay. So let's uh, proceed and see 
uh, uh, what I can do with this once I have force of uh, friction, uh, what I can uh, uh, do uh, with this. So for this, uh, we want to talk about a wheel that is rolling. So we are talking about now uh, rolling. And in fact, I will use the word perfect rolling. And for that, I need to emphasize on the word perfect and what does it mean to say perfect rolling. So let's have a diagram. So that's a wheel and that's a horizontal uh, surface. And let's think of this wheel uh, rolling down and this is the direction of the roll as it rolls down. And now it is possible. So as time evolves, let's say just for reference, I have a point here and that is another point here. That's the radius R and there are two points on this uh, wheel. So let me call this is point A and that's point B. As it rolls, there will be a situation when this point B reaches here and so point, uh, sorry, uh, what am I saying? <clears throat> yeah, because uh, help. So point B is help. Uh, uh, A goes that side. So maybe I should say this is point B, right? So that's, uh, so that should be point B here. Right? Maybe that's better. Right? So this is, so yeah. So that's point B. And now there will be a situation as this rolls, this is point B here and point A has moved here. Like it rolls down, A has gone up and B has taken its place. And we ask how much is this distance? And there is a possibility that this distance S can be exactly related to the circumference of that of that circle and that is possible only if this touches the surface at every instant at every point of this perfectly touches the surface we will call that perfectly rolling so we should know what does the rest of this mean that means uh, i should also say in a circle if you have a circle and you have an arc length the arc length of a circle is related to the angular stretch of the circle and that's equal to theta times r, where s is this distance. The so arc length of a circle is dependent on the radius of the circle by this. The way to understand is just this is if this was circumference, then the angle is 2 pi, and the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. So that's a small check out uh, there. Okay, so that's this is perfect rolling, but we can have other situations. What if s is less than theta r? That's one situation. So this, I call it perfect rolling. And even though I say it is perfect, it seems to suggest that it's an ideal situation. It doesn't happen uh, often. No, uh, whenever we are driving a car, unless you press on the brakes very hard, most of the time a car or a bicycle is actually perfectly rolling. And that's why it is very convenient to drive a bicycle in a, in a controlled uh, manner. The moment it's not perfect, it becomes hard to control. Okay, so if S is less than theta R, take the extreme scenario when S is zero. Right? If S is less, that means how far you move forward and how far you rotate. Oh, maybe I should say this is angle theta, right? That's angle theta. How far you rotate and how far you move forward, they need not be the same. In the extreme scenario, you do not go forward at all, but you're rotating a lot in this place. So you're spinning, but not moving forward. And that will be called slipping. That's just a terminology. And this happens whenever you're in mud. If you have a lot of mud in a place or a slush, right? And uh, if you are in uh, Western countries, where if you have experienced snow, Snow is a classic example where there is, for our uh, uh, places here, 
where we don't experience snow so much, then the best is mud. We have a lot of mud. If your car gets, or car wheel or your bicycle wheel gets stuck in snow or mud, then what happens is that your bicycle wheel is moving, spinning, but is not moving forward. That's an extreme version of slipping. There is another possibility that S is greater than theta times R, and that will be called sliding. And that is, that's what happens if, it, if the surface is too smooth. Like think of a bicycle again, and if you were trying to, uh, trying to ride a bicycle on a very smooth, uh, uh, like a mosaic or ice is the best example, right? Ice probably, uh, we can imagine at least a perfectly frictionless uh, situation, then you're moving forward a lot, but the wheel is actually not rolling. So it is basically the whole piece is moving. So A, B is here, A and B. A and B have not moved at all, but it is moving forward a lot. So that's sliding, slipping, and perfect rolling. We will talk about perfect rolling. So all the discussion that's going to follow from this point on is going to be about perfect uh, rolling. We can write the same relations with velocity if there is a distance divided by time, it's the same time for rolling and sliding. So divided out by time, radius is the same. So we can talk about velocity. So V is equal, so V is the, the forward motion. How fast are you moving forward? And omega is just a label. How fast are you rotating? I need to have some some parameter saying how fast are you rotating. So there's going to be two things. One is linear motion or the straight line motion, horizontal motion, and one is the rolling motion. So those are the two motions. It's possible that it is exactly equal. That's perfect rolling. It's possible that V is greater than omega times R. That means the amount of horizontal speed is greater than the rolling speed or uh, it's called the angular speed times the radius in that case this is the case of sliding and the earlier case is v less than omega r and that is slipping and this allows us to have some interpretation of what is happening right at the bottom Let's take the case of velocity exactly equal to omega r. Uh, this is, even though it looks like w when I'm writing it, it is omega in type for graphic, uh, you will be able to differentiate better. So I will call it omega, right, not uh, w. So if you want to visualize this here, so again, this is a wheel on a surface. When we say it is horizontal velocity is V, it is the velocity of this point right at the center of the wheel. We are saying this is a uniform wheel. Uh, that are no, uh, that is no uh, mass different, or, or mass is uniformly distributed everywhere on the wheel. So that's your velocity V. I had to define the velocity somewhere. So this is my velocity V. And now if you were to take, pick a point somewhere up here, this is rotating. So this has some velocity going forward also. So this point will have a larger velocity. And the bottom point is moving backward relative to this point. So this will be slightly smaller. In fact, if you keep going up it, since V is equal to omega R, that's exactly two times the velocity V. And as you go down at this point, it becomes V minus V, it is zero. And that's an important point for our discussion because we are saying that if velocity V relative to this point is zero there, that means as far as the surface and the right point, the point that is in contact with it, ideally speaking, that is only one point that is contact with a circle. This has velocity zero, like relative velocity of this is zero. So when you look at 
the point that is in touch with it, it is at rest. If something is at rest, that brings back to our discussion with which we started, what happens to friction? Friction is trying to resist motion. If something is rest, it doesn't care. It doesn't even have to act on it. So there is no friction as far as the relative velocity is zero. But that still remember that if you have a mass M, I'm having a mass M and if I were to exert a force external, this is at rest, right? This could be at rest and still there could be force of friction. The external force might not be sufficient enough to move this. There was this less than or equal to that we had in the model for friction. So we could have a force external acting on it and still the mass may not be moving. So velocity equal to zero doesn't mean that force of friction has to be zero. Force of friction is a response and whenever there is a tendency to move, it will resist the tendency to move. So we have come to the point that we have to ask, what is the tendency for this? Is it to go back forward or backward? That's what will decide the force of friction. So let's, so that makes us ask, what is the tendency of this point? Is this forward or is this in the backward direction? So. Let's to, uh, to investigate that, let's have a specific scenario. Any questions at this stage? Maybe I should ask because that was, uh, any questions? So the velocity on the top is twice, right? Is yes, that? exactly. Because this radius when I write, yeah, that's okay. this yeah. point, right? So when something is rotating, it's linear velocity is how far you are. So if you're very okay. far away from a stick, so if I'm, ro if, I'm ro if I'm rolling my hand like this, my tip of my hand is going much faster than the, the point that is closer to the, as far as velocity goes, not the rolling yes. velocity or the angular velocity is the same. So this uh, farther points go faster. And uh, you can come up with contradictions here because we often say that there is a speed limit of the speed of light in vacuum, then you can at least theoretically imagine what if I have an extremely long stick. So we have an extremely long stick, which almost goes all the way. Uh, it never ends, let's say. And now you rotate this, right? Now you rotate this. So this point is slower, right? This point is faster, faster, faster and so on. So there must be some point where it crosses a speed limit, which we said is the speed of light in vacuum, right? That should be, uh, that should bother all of us. Like, what do we mean by speed limit? So I'll, I'll not answer that question. That can be another discussion somewhere else, but uh, we can think about, oh, what happens to that? What if I have, if I just had, I just have to rotate the stick, right? Uh, but uh, yeah, that's an interesting, uh, that's a paradox or that, that is set up as a paradox in Einstein's theory of relativity, which says that there is a speed limit of uh, speed of light in vacuum sets that uh, speed limit, which is 299.792.458. That's an integer number these days. Earlier, it used to be a measured value, but these days it's an integer number. So uh, a nice uh, thing there. Uh, does that... Did I answer your question? Yeah, what was that? Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 it's fine. Yeah. It's fine and very interesting to see sticks of that kind. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so very nice. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so coming to the crux of the title for the talk. So let's say, what's the direction of friction on a rolling Wheel. So now I need to specify that question a little more. So let's talk about an engine assisted uh, rolling. By that, what I mean is the best thing is to take a car. In our car, there are four wheels. Often the engine is not attached to all four wheels. It is only attached to two of the wheels. 
mostly it is for small cars it is a front and that it is attached to again it depends on the models but most of the small cars you attach the wheel, uh, attach the engine to the front wheels and the back wheels are just rolling they are not doing anything more modern cars if it's a more powerful car you attach the attach the uh, engine to all four wheels and it gets more expensive and it gets more safer also which is again another discussion where you can ask why should it get safer when you attach the engines on both uh, all four cars uh, how does it help when you try to turn the car but uh, that's another point let's just ask an engine is connected to a wheel and what happens to this wheel so again so i have this uh, a wheel here and that's my contact surface and that's the center of the wheel and let's not make it a real point there but now i have an axle here and somehow this axle is connected to the wheel and axle tries to rotate and the wheel tries to rotate with that so i won't go into the details of what really is the connection mechanism there what I just need is that there is some thing trying to rotate this and whenever some the analog of force trying to rotate is called a torque. So this is an external torque. So in linear motion, so we have mass times acceleration is equal to some forces in rotational motion instead of acceleration we say it is the rotational acceleration this is a horizontal acceleration or a linear acceleration and this is a rotational acceleration and here this is the mass that resists that motion horizontal motion here it is not just the mass that resists it's the geometry of the of the of the body itself decides on what the resistance to motion angular motion is it is typically how far it is distributed from the axis so first we have to define an axis in this case it is coming out of the board and let's say it is all uniform for our purposes the rotational mass will be called i right this is a standard uh, terminology it is called the moment of inertia we will call it rotational inertia or rotational mass all pretty much uh, being loose there so this is mass that's rotational mass this is acceleration this is rotational acceleration by rotational acceleration it means if you're rotating if it changes its rotational speed right that's what uh, rotational acceleration is and that is being provided by the external torque this is what the engine is doing engine is helping it rotate it is not helping it move forward it is helping it rotate at least that's the way we have designed our cars and bicycles it is designed to rotate and the contact with the surface is what makes it move uh, forward there what are the other forces there is no horizontal force but now we have to say what is the direction of friction i can have the direction of friction backward or in the forward direction now remember we said that the force of friction has to resist whatever we are trying to do what we are trying to do is rotate external force is trying to rotate it so the force of friction will try to resist the rotation and the rotation is happening in the clockwise direction so the force of friction has to resist that so that's done by having the external force in the forward direction only when it is in the forward direction can it resist because as it is rotating it has to go in the backward direction this exerts a torque which is in the minus direction which is f force of friction times the radius r the minus sign because it is resisting it is as you see this is going in the clockwise direction this is tendency for this force is to make the wheel go in the counterclockwise direction so that negative sign makes it uh, makes it resist that that's the response to what we are trying to do but then this force will help 
this wheel move forward and that's where this comes in the same force comes helps in the forward motion so notice again if i were to explicitly write this so this is linear motion or horizontal motion is helped by oh i said force external this is force of friction sorry that's force of friction my fault i hope i didn't confuse this is the force of friction this is a response to the external force so i did write that here and this is rolling motion is i times alpha which is external force minus the force of friction times r doesn't matter what these variables are graphically what this means is that this is helping it pull forward linear motion a is motion is helped by this the angular motion is resisted by this friction so this is assisted by friction and this is resisted by friction that's a basic idea it cannot what you could ask what's harm and what if you make it go in the backward direction so for momentarily that's wrong but suppose i say it is in the backward direction what happens in the situation when the engine is connected to the wheel what happens in that case now notice that v was equal to omega r that is our condition for perfectly rolling what is happening is that this force of friction since it is in the backward direction this will decrease so v is decreasing decreasing i show by an arrow downward but this friction since it is rotating in this direction this is going to speed this up so omega is going to increase the rolling speed is going to increase due to this friction so omega is going to increase so on the left hand side if you have a force of friction in this direction it is decreasing right hand side is increasing that's not possible if you want to maintain this so if you say perfect rolling perfect rolling is cannot be sustained if you have the friction in the backward direction on a wheel that's connected to the engine that's the way to see that so this is so this is wrong right this is wrong this is just for discussion i brought it in if that is the case then perfect rolling condition will not be satisfied any questions at this stage this should bother any logical uh so you, so you have you have a force on the right and there is another force on the left no i'm slightly confused oh uh no if i have an engine assisted rolling this is where the friction is okay that's the direction of friction and this is the equations i'm saying let so this is a let or what if what if f was in the backward direction i'm trying to disprove that or i'm trying to point out that there will okay. be an inconsistency if the friction was in the backward direction then it will decrease the velocity decrease the linear velocity or the decrease the horizontal velocity and it will increase the rolling velocity and immediately this will not get satisfied so our perfectly rolling condition will not be satisfied if we have friction going in the backward direction for an engine assisted rolling so this is wrong this is correct so that's the two uh, direction does that did that clarify yeah it's clear yeah fine fine yeah 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 so that's so thanks for pointing out so because i messed up a little here so hopefully that didn't confuse so just for completeness oh yeah go ahead question no no questions okay so for completeness 
we should also talk about is it when is the force of friction can the force of friction be in the backward direction and yes it will be in the backward direction if you do not connect the engine to the wheel and that is what happens in most of the cars in the back wheels so let's see a wheel which is in the back side so this is the back wheel or what we will call it is so we don't have to say it is really a back wheel so uh, a wheel rolling uh, by a horizontal pull that's what happens in a back wheel it is just rolling and it is being pulled by the axle is connected to a rod which is connected to the chassis of the of the car and it is just being pulled horizontally so let's have this wheel again and we have a horizontal and this time uh, let me pull it by connecting it to the center that's your force external the engine is somewhere here right this is a front wheel right this is connected to that and that is just pulling it engine is down here right that's the engine which is trying to rotate but we don't have to worry about that somehow this engine is exerting a force which is being which is pulling this in the horizontal direction no engine is connected in here and now let us see again what is the direction of friction friction has to resist whatever we are trying to do we are trying to move it horizontally that has to be resisted so the friction will be in the backward direction And this is rolling also. So what happens to the rolling motion? What is going to, uh, what is uh, it trying to uh, do there? This is assisting rolling, but this is resisting linear motion. So it, this time the equations will be linear motion again, and we have rolling motion. So we have mass times acceleration is equal to, so there are two forces now, that's an external force, which is trying to pull it, that is being eventually provided by the engine or just the idea of it moving forward. And this is the force of friction is resisting that. So this is resisted by friction. So the moving forward, we are trying to make it move forward is resisted by friction and the rolling motion, which we said is I times alpha. This is left hand side just means that it's, it's the rolling motion is being assisted in the sense that only one force, this force is right at the center. So this doesn't help it roll. If you were to have a wheel and exert a force right at the center, or for that matter, if you take a door and try to push it, by pushing on the hinge, it doesn't roll. We learned quite early in life when we are very young that you have to exert the force on the handle very far away from the axle to make it rotate. So this doesn't make it rotate. So it's a force of friction that makes it rotate and it is helping it, right? It's in, the, in this direction, in the direction of the roll. So this is assisted by the force of friction. So that's for complete it's the same idea. And we can again say that what if it was in the opposite direction, it will not sustain the idea of it being uh, it perfectly rolling. If these two are the situation, this leads us to one interesting point that what if we do not have an external force and we do not have a engine connected either. So you're not neither pulling it nor connecting it to an engine it's just a simple wheel which you just roll it on the surface we have all done that when we were young you take a uh, empty uh, a bicycle wheel and sometimes you just roll it on the on a surface or on a road and what's the direction of friction in that case right. so when it when you connect an engine it's in the forward direction, when it is not connected to an engine, it is in the backward direction. What if you don't connect either one of them, right? So this is 
just perfectly rolling. So ro perfectly rolling, perfect rolling uh, under no forces or under no F external or angular force, no horizontal force, no, uh, no rotational force. So we have this wheel again, that's your wheel, that's the surface and it is rolling in this direction. And we have to again ask what's the direction of friction? Is it in the forward or backward direction? Remember that if, if you have a mass just sitting there, remember the velocity V is zero here, you could still have friction, right? There could be force external and force of friction acting backward, still canceling, no motion, or it could be in the opposite direction also, right? There could be a tendency to go that way and the force of friction could be this way. And that might lead to the idea that, oh, maybe force of friction could be either way. No, because again, if we have, it, have a force of friction, one will assist a rolling motion and one will resist the other motion. So it will immediately spoil the perfect rolling. So in this case, it is necessary that the force of friction has to be zero, which is interesting that you're actually making this move so just when you take a, a bicycle wheel and you just roll it on a surface, there is absolutely no friction if it was perfectly rolling. What happens typically it is, is that as it is moving, it is not really perfectly rolling. It, uh, it leads to a small deceleration in the, uh, it has to resist. So the friction will be in the backward direction because it has to resist this way. Eventually it comes to a stop. So that is a small friction acting on it, but ideally speaking in a perfect rolling, the force of friction should be perfectly uh, zero. And that should be counterintuitive. Uh, it's, a, it's an ideal uh, scenario. And with that, I will stop. Any comments or questions are most welcome. I still have some time, yeah. So as you are rightly pointing it out, the rotation, with the friction is what we are moving forward, right? Uh, repeat that please, Shankar. So essentially we are rotating a wheel, the, rota the rotation force in addition to the uh, sorry, rotation force plus the friction makes us to move forward, right? Uh, no, uh, uh, you mean the last discussion here, right? We are having none of no. them. There is no rotational force. This is no. equal no, to I'm just, No, I am trying to you know, connect the previous uh, discussion. Uh, with the third, oh, so maybe I should go to this. Uh, you're talking about this then. Yeah. yeah. But maybe I, I did not understand the question maybe. Yeah, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, here. So here you have a rotation. So engine yes. is essentially rotating the wheel. No, engine is not connected. So engine is here, right? That's a no, secondary no, no, thing. I'm, no, no, I'm just telling. So essentially what engine yeah, does yeah. is it is just applying force to rotate. Correct, exactly, Not, exactly. To, move, not yes. to move forward, yeah. Exactly, exactly. And that is what and happens this, in ice or uh, and, maybe, yeah, ice, right? Yeah, you can keep rotating it, but it will not move forward. Yeah, okay. So this rotation plus the friction exerted is making the vehicle to move forward, right? Exactly, exactly. Good point. That's that's the summary of, of the actual thing that's happening, correct? Yeah, actually, uh, exactly. I just want to make one point. Uh, yeah. Many years back, uh, I saw one movie made by Maniratnam. You know, there is a director called Maniratnam, right? Yes, yes, I'm aware. Yeah, great. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> I, you know, when I looked at your diagram, uh, I, I, I recollected one of his uh, scene from a movie in that, you know, he's uh, fantasizing. I, I don't know whether he's fantasizing or maybe it is technically not correct. Uh, he was showing a scene in a song where these uh, kids will be running a bicycle 
but not on the floor but in the air but they still move forward kind of <laughs> yes 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 i get your point so yeah movies don't always do justice to the uh to the to the laws governing the wheels i suppose yeah but if it is a fantasizing you can allow it i suppose yeah like exactly. to a certain extent movies are fantasizing so we can be we can allow that with that yeah movie. right yeah i get it yeah 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 so uh yeah true <laughs> yeah maybe one should make a movie where they should show all these non trivialities that oh you're trying to move it and then you you're not moving forward and you're just staying in one place uh, i mean that that can be made comic and you can convey that point uh, to to the audience yeah good point very good point yeah yeah agreed agreed yeah yeah nice comments yeah yeah any other and, comments and, and this yeah. and this kind of things are different from the way uh, the birds are moving forward right when well, that's a different story uh what moving forward no no this is different from the uh, way the birds are moving forward while they fly yeah yes yes that's uh, entirely uh different i think that's pretty much like swimming i suppose right there's a fluid and i think yeah i mean i haven't given enough critical thought on it that uh, yeah but i would think uh, my initial guess is that yeah it's more like swimming you're actually pushing the uh, fluid backward and you're getting propelled forward in that uh, process yeah but good point yeah yeah i think that must be the correct comment yeah 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 good point again yeah nice yeah yeah any other comments or questions yeah as i said we should try to make it as much discussions as possible but these are first few lectures hopefully to get the spirit of having discussions will take some time yeah i keep looking in that direction because i my my screen is that side i see you guys there so i should set up my camera somehow in that direction i suppose yeah chaji yeah. okay. it's me oh yes uh, uh, Kanna, go uh ahead. yeah i have been uh, part of the whole conversation and the thing but i i don't yeah. know i didn't understand much of your physics me being a doctor uh, but i appreciate whatever has happened today uh, it was a very nice discussion even though i didn't understand it was like you know there was a participation i encourage it no no thank you yeah yeah, yeah. thank you the hope is that uh, this gets very there should be so much participation that i should not be able to move forward yes like you shouldn't this, be able to come a, a, a talk that has been prepared for one hour should take five lectures or five hours to finish so that yes. should be the amount of participation yes. but uh, hopefully yes. we will reach that okay. sometime as as yes. far as it is productive that will be good yeah yeah yes yeah. okay yeah. all the best see you again next yeah. week yeah thank you shamna yeah thanks shankar for all the comments and discussions and lenu kumar and george thank you very much yeah for joining yeah that's nice okay bye yeah, yeah. bye bye shamna bye shankar let me change the camera yes dinu kumar any comments yeah thank you yeah uh shadish yes Oh, are you sitting in your uh, center, which you started recently? Yes, yes. The the center, you mean? Yes, I can show you. The I I can rotate this and show you. Give me a second. Yeah, I'll show you the okay. thing. So let me.
first i thought you are in some classroom <laughs> okay so i'll show you so this is uh, let me zoom out so that's kind of the so i'm going to rotate this now uh, let's go okay. to the other yeah let's go to the other direction first so this is the one of the doors okay right yeah and that's the front side there is a road going right in front of it so you, you might have heard some yeah. vehicles going around and if i yeah. go down these are some chairs and tables i typically okay. have things kept on these tables activities but i moved it out thinking that if there are students or someone coming they should right. uh, have access to that so this is the back side and there are boards there there is a small room there where i intend to store all the all the uh, stuff that's my father oh, he has okay. been uh, his uh, his my dedicated uh, <laughs> uh, audience he has been there for both lectures yeah so, okay okay uh, fine he's uh, and uh, i'll move around and that's a toilet we have and there are that's the tv on which i see you guys okay yeah there are more <laughs> boards oh and <laughs> so you fill with boards so yeah yeah that's a theoretical <laughs> physicist correct uh, yeah fascination i suppose <laughs> so oh, that's it okay. yeah that's that's and there is a camera tripod right in the center of the room where i can right, go around right. move it around so hopefully oh, that gives an a, idea oh it's a fantastic yeah, initiative yeah. i i wish you good luck <laughs> yeah thank you shankar and thanks for joining and uh, discuss uh, discussing yeah that's exactly yeah. what we want okay. yeah yeah but okay, okay, uh, fine. yeah good point thank you yeah Hello. feel free if you get time i know you are busy but if you get time and you <laughs> you want to spend time feel free to join in whenever yeah. anytime sure i'll do that yeah yeah yes can you hear me yes lenu kumar i can hear you yes please so it is a moment of inertia so is it a geometrical moment of inertia uh i couldn't okay let me change my there's a lot of I'm not able to hear you very well. Let me. Yeah, could you repeat the question, Lena Kumar? Now, uh, you tell uh, tell about the moment of inertia. Is it a geometrical moment of inertia? Uh, I cannot hear you. Why is that, Shankar? Can you hear Lena Kumar? Yeah, I can. I can. Oh, I cannot hear you either now. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah, please repeat. Uh, okay. Oh, I lost audio. Hold. On. I think it is because of the. I think I tried to change the person. Give me a minute. Yeah. Okay. Can you say something? Anyone? Okay. Here you tell about the moment of finish. Yeah. that moment of inertia oh, no. is the last uh, audio geometrical moment of inertia sajesh can you hear me what's bad hello 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 Okay. Hello. Yeah, please, Lena Kumar, say something. I think I heard something. Can you, uh, can you hear me? Yes, now I can. Uh, then you tell about the moment of inertia. That moment of inertia is a geometrical moment of inertia. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Oh, the question is: Is moment of inertia dependent on the geometry? Is that the question? Yes, 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 yes. Yes, it is purely dependent on the uh, geometry, I suppose, because it is decided by the distance from the axis, correct? So, how is the mass distributed about an axis? First, we need an axis, and like we can always think of situations where the axis itself is moving around, 
as a motion, but in simple scenarios, we consider the axis to be constant or it's pointing in the same direction. And then it is the motion about that. So it's MR square. Is that the point? So the geometry decides that. It's interesting because certain numbers, it's hard to motivate. For example, if you were to ask, uh, what's the volume of a sphere? The number four pi by three, one yeah, has yeah. to do the calculation. I think that's the only way to get that. You cannot uh, uh, argue that, oh, this must be this. So similarly, the moment of inertia, one has to do the calculation. There is no way one can motivate that number. It is a pure, uh, like it's an intrinsic property of the geometry, I think, which comes out of a uh, actual calculus problem. So yeah, it is a geometry dependent. That's my comment that it is a geometry dependent uh, concept. So does that, is that satisfying answer? Yes, yes, Maybe? okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. Nice, good point, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, in connection to the uh, discussion of moment of inertia, uh, I made a small, you know, uh, demonstration kit at my office. Okay. Uh, where I try to make objects of uh, different shapes and try to see which one is rolling better or something, no? Nice, 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 nice. Okay, I yeah. can imagine that. So yeah. on that context, now, maybe... Yeah, now, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. So, so I have, uh, you know, in the context of what uh, Lino Kumar was asking about moment of inertia, if you have, if you take a cylinder of certain length and uh, radius, okay, let's say it's a solid cylinder, you roll it with a different length and different uh, size and all that. But as long as it is a solid cylinder, they all roll in a similar way. Yes, yes. Correct. Because the acceleration depends on, depends on the moment of inertia, which depends only on the geometry. Correct. <laughs> So among the cylinders, there will not be any change in the acceleration, but you will have a difference between cylinder and the uh, sphere, spherical ball or something, something like that. Correct, correct, correct. And so the even, moment even of inertia you, depend, does not depend on it, but oh yeah, interesting, yeah. And uh, even when you rotate, even when you rotate uh, cylinder, with, uh, cylinder with a hollow, hollow cylinder, which is different from that of the Solid cylinder, and so Correct. for these spheres also, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. So we, so this experiment I should have done it during my schooling days, but I did it some time ago. <laughs> no, that's <laughs> so maybe. So just for uh, uh, it, would it be possible to discuss that next week? Would you like to here? Would you like? To? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe one can do that. Sure. Yeah. I'll do that, yeah. Yeah, maybe you can give the talk next Saturday. That'll give me a break. Oh, oh, oh that's right, okay. <laughs> do you think I, I, you I, I, talk? I, I, no, not a problem, no issue. Perfect, perfect, okay, yeah. Maybe, may, may not be as uh, as detailed as yours, but I can make it. <laughs> uh, I, I know you, so <laughs> I think it'll be a great uh, uh, talk. Yeah, 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 so that'll be cool, okay. yeah. And okay, I'll if, do that. if possible, I don't know online things, how easy it is to make a demonstration, but if it is possible, maybe make a video or something. I, I don't want to put work on you. Just do whatever you can and make it cash yeah, flow. What I will do, I may not be able to do the demonstration, but I can discuss on the screen or something, no? Yes, yes, yes. That's, so that yeah, we can appreciate the role of moment of inertia for the rolling objects. Correct. Correct. That will be beautiful. Yeah, that I think that will be perfect. Yeah, I'll I love okay. it. Yeah. Okay. okay. That, that's exactly. So there should be participation from all of us. That will be good. What do you think, Lenny Kumar? So that will be a nice. It's a very good, right? very good, very good yeah, suggestion. Yeah, right. Perfect. Okay. Okay. So I will try to circulate uh, between us uh, that you will be giving the talk. Uh, 
next time yeah uh, one okay. more question in the case of a bending uh, bending beam bending the bending of a beam we take moment of inertia is i equal to bd cube by 2 is it a geometric moment of inertia oh tell that again if there is a beam bending of a beam the moment because of inertia of the weight or because of uh, the rotations that we were talking about okay okay so that uh, that case we take the moment of inertia that is geometrical moment of inertia is bd cube divided by 12 so any difference oh. between ordinary moment of inertia and geometrical moment of inertia what are the difference i do not know immediately i don't know because uh, i haven't paid attention to that shankar do you know the answer immediately No, the moment of inertia itself is a geometrical, right? Geometrical. Yeah, I That's think all. the question is uh, probably if you are rotating it. You said what? Uh, uh, repeat your thought, Lena Kumar. I think you made a comment. Yeah. In the case of a bending of a beam or cantilever, in the case of a cantilever, oh. uh, rectangular block, you know, the bending of a rectangular block, we take a moment of inertia BD cube divided by 12. D is the thickness, B is the breadth. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Similarly, I see. in the case of a cylinder, oh, it I is see. the pi I r see. raised to 4 by 4. Pi r raised to 4 by 4. R is the radius of the cylinder. Correct. Yeah. Uh, I, now I see. I thought V was the velocity. That's why I was completely confused. I thought it had to do with motion. No, no, no. B, B is the oh. breadth. B is the yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's just the moment of inertia of that particular geometry, I guess. Yeah, I don't remember it out of my head, but that's what it will be. Yeah, so it will be geometry, correct? So that will be the geometry of that uh, object. So it's a geometrical property, the moment of inertia about an axis. Okay, okay. thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. Sajesh? Yes. Uh, you mentioned about this uh, stick, long stick, no? Yes. Yeah. So that's actually an interesting thing. Uh, so essentially, as you go away from the point of pivot, the velocity is more. Yes, linearly. Usually, classically speaking, we say it is linear, right? Yeah. In fact, uh, that is what we have learned during our school days. As you said, we have to rotate it at the edge of the uh, gate or something so that you can rotate easily, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. In this uh, context, uh, what we are, you know, technically it is actually called as a not force, but it's a moment, right? Moment. Yes. Uh -huh. So, the, so basically force into distance, right? Yes. Exactly. So that is mm -hmm. called as the moment. Moment of the force. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Moment. Moment of force. So yeah. the moment is what is responsible for the rotation. Okay, yeah. Correct. Correct. Okay. Meaning yeah, but, the large, large, higher velocity. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But there the problem will be that so now we have to say when it is going at extremely large speed, I think the idea is the concept of rigid body is not a very relativistic concept. Like okay, rigid. I'm not going to the stick actually. The stick yeah, is very yeah, long, yeah. so I'm not going to that. <laughs> Correct, exactly. Yeah, let's not worry about it. Yeah, that's a okay. completely uh, like that's how it is. It is sort of resolved, kind of. So the idea is the rigid. The key is rigid body, and yeah. how how the molecular how the movements gets transferred from one to the other. Like okay. we are trying to exert it, exert a moment very close to the axis. As you get yeah. farther and farther, how does it get transferred is not obvious. We assume okay. that a rigid body exists, but yeah, I yeah, think yeah. rigid body don't exist. So that's, I think, the key to that. But yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah the point is, uh, it is yeah, for the rotation of the object, it's not the force, it is actually the moment which is important. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, that's what you're stressing. Yeah. Yeah, good yeah, point. Yeah, 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 okay. okay. yeah, thanks, thanks, yeah, good point. Yeah, nice, yes, the great discussions, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, so we will have the next talk by you, Kantar, yeah, that'll be great. And 
yeah you see the audience i'll try to circulate this further so that it feels better to have a little more audience but uh, i'll try my best but i cannot guarantee yeah. okay cool any more questions lino Ah uh, no no it's a very good very good class nice thank you thank you yeah thank you yeah I think it was a good participation here this time yeah thanks okay sajesh thank you so much for your uh, you know detailed discussion on friction which we usually and largely take it for granted right all right that's right <laughs> that's right that's right yeah so it's yeah. interesting to see that this was details people have worked for work many centuries back you know <laughs> yes exactly 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 yeah leonardo da vinci who would have thought that he had this idea that it is independent of area yeah way yeah. before uh, newton like it's 1500s yeah yeah, yeah, yeah it's uh, 1400s uh, like it's basically 1500 15th century mm -hmm. yeah great i mean yeah yeah fantastic. exactly yeah remarkable yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah you mentioned in the beginning itself it's independent of area right <laughs> right yeah, yeah. remarkable okay. okay yeah cool thanks a lot for pointing out such uh, historical facts yeah 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 thank you yeah and yeah so i look forward to the talk on saturday next uh, saturday and i'll communicate with you how we can circulate that okay cool okay thanks thank you yeah bye So, yeah. Bye, Bye. Lenny Kumar. Yes, yeah, shall I close? Okay. Can you hear me? <laughs> shall I close. end the meeting? Yeah. No. Go ahead, Lenny Kumar. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes. Okay. okay. So very nice, <laughs> nice discussion. Okay. Yes, next like day, next Saturday. What is the what is the topic? Sir? Yeah. Next week, as Shankar said, he will talk about moment. Indonesia. Okay. Let's see. Hello. Hello. Could you hear me? Yes. Yes. Hear me. okay yeah and i'll try to circulate it again between some of us here so that it can be spread so if there is some participation that will help yeah okay that did i clarify is... that lenny kumar so the next talk will be by shankar yes yes and, next and thanks for uh, suggesting this to uh i think uh, mr george right or professor george i suppose uh, so i hope it was productive for him yeah uh, george uh, this... yeah he is the one you recommended i suppose right you yes, 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 yes. yeah yeah thank you thank you yeah yeah so hopefully he joins us again for shankar stop also okay i'll keep in touch maybe i should make a small group list so that i can communicate this easily yeah okay 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 see you next week okay okay think, uh, see you next week yeah thank you yeah i will call you okay yeah sure yeah i i'll call you yes yeah okay okay so just bye bye yeah bye, bye shankar yeah, yeah thank bye. you bye lenny kumar bye dr lenny kumar bye bye okay okay thank you sir thank you sir